my name is Amy and this is Amy Reads. Today I am coming to you from a slightly different angle. Let me know if you like it. I've gone up a little bit. I noticed a lot of other booktubers are kind of got a different angle. Anyway, I'm trying something new. Let me know. I also have a bit of a ring light situation happening. If I put it up where it's supposed to be, then it's just like, hello, I'm, I'm using a ring light and that's all you can see in my glasses. So uh, let me know if the lighting's okay. Whatever. I mean, is it about the lighting or is it about the books? It's about the books, so let's start talking about them. I read six books in the month of November. Yes, November. And I'm going to talk to you about them today. As usual, I'm going to go from my lowest rated book all the way up to my highest rated book. I read a book this month that I did not intend on reading, certainly not this month. I mean, I did intend on reading it later on, but I just kind of picked it up out of nowhere read it in like two days and gave it five stars. So intrigue, it's my only five star read of the month, so we'll get to it last. But without further ado, let's get started. The first book that I wanna talk about today is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. I gave this three out of five stars. I listened to this on audiobook because even though I own it and I got it for like a dollar at a book sale, um, it was available through my library on audiobook. I needed a new audiobook to read, so I read it. I really enjoyed especially the first half of this book, but I feel like as we got to the second half, it got to be really redundant and repetitive, and it just kind of lost me, if we're being honest. Also, had I read this as opposed to listening to it, um, not that listening is not reading, but if I had read the physical copy instead of listening to it, I might have liked it more because Jenny Lawson's voice is very annoying. I love all that she had to say, but listening to her voice for several, several hours. I mean, there were literally times where I was just like, I have to not listen to this. I have to take a break because I couldn't handle her voice any longer. So that was an issue with the audiobook. But anyway, um, I enjoyed this. I, there were some definite like laugh out loud moments in the beginning, but like I said, the first half I found better than the last half. And so overall, I ended up just giving it a three out of five. The next two books, um, were ebooks that I read this month, the first being The Lying Game by Ruth Ware. I read The Woman in Cabin 10, uh, which is um, the one that came before The Lying Game, and not that they're connected, but it was Ruth Ware's most recent book. Um, and I loved The Woman in Cabin 10. It had very mixed reviews, but I really liked it. I flew through it. I was never bored. I really enjoyed the ending. I think I gave it like four and a half stars. Um, I've heard this about Ruth Ware's writing and I've not read her first one yet, um, but it's kind of, it's not the writing that's bad, it's sometimes the story is just eh, and I found this story to be very eh. I ended up giving it three stars. It is about a woman who uh, had gone to this girls boarding school in this coastal town and she made this very tight group of friends, there's four girls, and they had a very intense time together. Something happened and then they ended up kind of splintering apart and even though they've sort of kept in touch over the years, they've not, they've all kind of moved on. Um, and so they get summoned back by one of the friends to this coastal town because something about the thing they did has resurfaced and they need to deal with it. That's all I'll say. Um, I love Ruth Ware's writing, but the, I almost DNF this book at like 65%. I was 65% done and I was just like, you know, I am bored with this book and I'm not feeling it. So I almost gave up on it 65% of the way, if that tells you anything about it. Now, some people might love it, it, it just wasn't for me. The next book I read that was an ebook this month was One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. This is a YA mystery that's sort of been compared to like The Breakfast Club but with a murder <laughs> because there are uh, five students, yeah, five students in detention after school. It's immediately where the book starts. Um, and one of them drinks this water that has some kind of peanut oil or something in it even though the person is super allergic to peanuts and dies in basically in detention. So you have these four other students who are of course suspects and it's sort of about the media circus and how they are treated and their, you know, the interpersonal relationships within that group um, because it's kind of people that didn't really know each other very well. Um, anyway, you get, you get uh, points of view chapters from all four of the remaining students and I really, I liked this book for what it was. Um, I did have some issues with the ending, and so I'm not going to discuss those um, 
because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who does want to see it or wants to see it <laughs> for anyone who does want to read it. Um, you may not have issues with the ending, but that for me is what I, I gave it like a three and a half, four stars because of some of the things that happen in the final act of the book. If you want to know, just know that, you know, there might be some harmful things in there for people. So, um, maybe do your own research. That's all I'll say. And then I don't spoil it for anyone who wants to read it. Next, I read A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. Um, this is my first Mindy McGinnis book. I got this scratch and dent, as you can kind of see, from Book Outlet a few months ago and thought it would be a really great October read. I didn't get to it in October, so November. Um, this is about, I think this is set in the 1800s in like the, well, it's in America. It starts in Boston and then it's also in Ohio, I think. Um, it starts with a girl who has been uh, put in a sane asylum because she is pregnant, because that sort of thing happened back then. Anyway, she's a young girl who was pregnant in an insane asylum, and essentially she ends up, through a series of events, kind of being recruited to help this doctor who is um, using his intellect to solve murders. And she's very observant, and she has a very specific set of skills. Um, much like Liam Neeson and Taken, and uh, she, she ends up being a really big help to him, so he kind of recruits her. But I really ended up enjoying this book a lot. I think that I will read some other Minnie McGinnis books. Um, I ended up giving this four out of five stars, so if you are interested in some kind of like historical fiction with um, almost like a, definitely not paranormal, but like a, I don't know, like a creepy gothic murdery vibe to it. <laughs> That's a good description. Uh, then I would check it out. Next, I read Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore, which I believe is my, let me think. Was this the October box? The October owl crate? I think that it was. Um, which was one of my favorite owl crates that we have had so far. And this is a magical realism book about a family of uh, all women because um, it's, it's like five or six women and who are cousins and then their daughters who are cousins and so on and so forth. So they all live together on this land because they are attached to the land and they cannot leave. Um, and they basically, each one of them can grow flowers from their hands. And so they have built this beautiful garden on their lands. Um, yeah, I, that's kind of all I knew about it going in and that's sort of all that I think you all should know about it going into it. Uh, it is YA technically, um, because I guess the girls are in their teens, um, but it doesn't necessarily have like a YA vibe. I also like that I can't tell, and maybe I should know, I can't tell what time period this is set in. I think it's supposed to be modern times, but it doesn't feel like it a lot of the time. So anyway, maybe I missed something and you all can correct me, but um, I kind of like that it has that like almost out of time feeling where you're not super sure when it takes place. Um, which I think adds to the mystery of it and just sort of the general atmosphere. The writing in this was beautiful. This ended up being a four, four and a half out of five star for me. I really loved it and that cover is one of my favorite covers of the year, if not ever. And the last book that I read this month, and it actually was the last book I read in November, was my five star read. So some people will be into this and some people will not, but I finally read a Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. My friend Brittany will be very happy with me. Um, I was planning on reading this series starting in about January. It's what I told myself. I was like, let me get through all the Christmas craziness. And then when it's January and I have like nothing to do, I'm going to hunker down and read this trilogy. Because I felt like, I don't know, like a more of a high fantasy than I'm used to. I don't really read a whole lot of fantasy stuff. Um, this almost has like an urban fantasy sort of vibe too. It's not like dragons and it's not like Game of Thrones fantasy. Um, so I can do more of that sort of thing. I'm rambling. Anyway, I planned on reading this trilogy, but not yet. And so I finished, I think A Madness So Discreet actually, and I was in sort of a darker vibe. And so um, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start this book, why not? And I was, addicted to this. I read this whole book in I think two maybe three days which for me is pretty good and it is I it's been a long time since I have felt the compulsive need to read a book but I was like it's all I could think about like I would be doing sorry 
are my arm itches. <laughs> I would be doing other stuff. I would be at work and I would just be like jonesing to sit and read this book because I had to finish it. So I loved it and I gave it five stars and I am currently as of filming in the middle of Gathering of Shadows. So that should be on my December TBR and hopefully a Conjuring of Light as well or on my wrap up I mean. Uh, so I will keep you posted but yeah you probably already know what this is about. This is people call this YA. I don't really feel like it's YA and also she wrote it under V.E. Schwab which is what she writes her adult books under. Victoria Schwab is what she writes her, her YA stuff under. So I feel like this is more of an adult book. Not that there are, you know, there's not like steamy sex in it or anything, but, um, and basically it is about a traveler named Kel who, um, can travel between the four different Londons because in this, in this particular world, there are four different Londons, red, black, gray, and white. Um, and so he can travel between them, which is a rarity anymore. There aren't a lot of people left who can do that. And he meets Lila who uh, lives in gray London and is a thief. And uh, the two of them sort of team up and they have a particular adventure that they need to go on and I won't say anything more about it. Um, but yeah, I love the world that, that um, the world building in this book. And again, I'm not huge into fantasy. So to, for me to find a fantasy series that I am like addicted to is a pretty big deal and I'm excited about it. So yeah, those are the six books that I read in the month of November. Please let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of these, if you like them, if you dislike them. What did you read in November? Um, I would love to know. And what are you reading next month? We've got one month left in the year. Talk to me about your reading goals. Talk to me about December. Talk to me about really anything. I'm down with it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and let me know if this angle works or if it's weird. I uh, I don't know. I don't know. I need your feedback, guys. Let me know. Have an awesome day. I'll see you in my next video.